Good day, everybody, and uh, welcome to another episode of Bible in a Year. And uh, this is actually day 18 today of our Bible in a Year. Um, but I want to talk about day 17, yesterday. Yesterday, if you have followed the plan, you have finished the book of Genesis and uh, covered a lot of ground, a lot of history. Um, and uh, yesterday's chapters were chapters 48, 49, and 50. And uh, we see at that, of course, um, when it's all done, um, the death of Joseph. And uh, so, but let me just uh, say a few words here about the end, towards the end of the chapter, chapter 50. Uh, starting in verse 15, the Bible says, um, And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and he'll certainly requite us in all the evil which we did unto him. And, um, and uh, in verse 17, and, or verse 16, they sent a messenger to Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray now, Pray thee now the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for their, for they did evil. They did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept uh, when they spake unto him. Verse 18, And when his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am, for am I in the place of God. In verse 21, but as, or verse 20, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And lastly, verse 21, now therefore fear you not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. How about that? Let me just say some things about this passage. Um, in the beginning there in verse 15, um, they're saying, you know what, we better watch out. Dad's dead. Jacob's died. Uh, he's going to get back. He's going to get back. He's going to, he's going to turn on us. Um, and, uh, you know what, knowing the flesh, of course, that's possible. Any one of us are capable of that, but they don't know their brother, Joseph. They don't know how God had really, truly worked in his heart. Um, and he says, they use the word requite there. It's quite an interesting word because the word means to pay back, uh, to repay, whether it be good or evil, uh, to recompense, uh, to do or give in return. And the Bible even mentions some of that in 1 Timothy 5, 4 about the widows and, um, and their affliction and so forth and the church's uh, responsibility to take care of them. And he says first before the church takes them on in 1 Timothy 5, 4, that the, the nearest kin, family members, the children, um, the nephews, all these different relationships that are close to them are supposed to pay them back to take care of them before the church would step up to the plate. But anyway, in this passage in verse 15, they're in great fear. Even as in Psalm 53, 5, the Bible says there they were in great fear where no fear was. You know what? With a lot of people, even unfortunately some of God's people, they're in bondage. The Bible says the fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. So the opposite of fear is faith. Faith. Amen? Putting your trust. People are ensnared in bondage to their fears. God says, why don't you just trust in God? So anyway, in verse 16, they sent a messenger on Joseph saying, The Father did command thee. Now, we can't find that anywhere. Is that made up? I don't know. Maybe it's an unlikely story. Um, so anyway, they're just asking for mercy. Please be merciful. So in verse 17, so shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of God thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And uh, so Joseph wept when he heard these words, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's, how can I say it? It's like, how could you doubt my character, brothers? How could you doubt me? And uh, they don't, like I said, they don't know what God has done in the heart of Joseph. In verse 18, his brethren also went, fell down before his face. They said, behold, we be thy servants. And his brethren also um, went and fell down there. So, you know, they backed up their plea with 
a genuine show of humility. You know, they're falling down before him. And then Joseph, in verse 19, Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? And he understood a very important principle, Joseph. And again, God did so much in his life. In all those years he was away um, in Egypt there. He, he first understood that, you know what? I'm not God. I'm going to let God take care of some things. If people have done wrong, I need to let it go. I mean, Romans 12 says, recompense to no man evil for evil in Romans 12, 17. The Bible says in Romans 12, 19, give place unto wrath. He even quotes Paul's letter to the Romans, tells him in verse 19, vengeance is mine. That's not yours, it's God's. Vengeance is his. Vengeance is mine, the Lord. I will repay, saith the Lord. That's a quote from Deut Deuteronomy 32, 35, where God says that. And he, uh, he says, the only way you're ever going to be able to overcome evil is to do good. That's Romans 12, 21. So, you know what? They just, he just, Joseph realized, and he knew this, but they thought, oh, he's going to get him back. But you think too little of Joseph. Verse 20, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it to good. Now he says that a few other places prior to this in the accounts of Genesis there, amen. And uh, and sometimes, you know, we have those questions. We really do. Oh, why am I going through this? And, you know, we don't understand. And all I can say to you is Romans 8, 28. And I know many people have quoted that. And you might say, well, but I look at the life of Joseph. What a good spirit. He says, you meant to hurt me. You meant evil to me, but God meant it for good. God worked through all of this. And we know that all things work together to, for good to them that love God who are called according to his purpose. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, amen. And he says, but you know what? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it under good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. That's the, you know what? If Jacob's family didn't come to Egypt, they would not have lived. They would have perished in the famine. You know what? There's a little thing, I didn't write this myself, but let me just read it to you. Someone once said, if Joseph's brothers never sold him to the Ishmaelites, then Joseph would have never gone to Egypt. If Joseph never went to Egypt, he would have never been sold to Potiphar. If Joseph was never sold to Potiphar, Potiphar's wife would never have falsely accused him. If Potiphar's wife never falsely accused Joseph, then Joseph would have never been put in prison. If Joseph was never put in prison, he would never have been met the baker and the butler of Pharaoh. If Joseph never met the baker and butler of Pharaoh, he would never have interpreted their dreams. If Joseph never interpreted their dreams, he would have never interpreted Pharaoh's dream. If Joseph never interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he would never have become prime minister, second in Egypt only to Pharaoh. If Joseph never became prime minister, he would never, he would never have fought wisely prepared for the terrible famine to come. If Joseph never wisely prepared for the terrible famine to come, then the family back in Canaan would have died in the famine. And if Joseph's family back in Canaan didn't, uh, or would have died in the famine, then the Messiah could not have come from a dead family. If the Messiah did not come forth, then Jesus never came. If Jesus never came, then we're all dead in our sins and trespasses and without hope in this world. You know what? This is not a, a condoning or an endorsement of anyone's failures or faults or sins in the Bible. But we know that God takes people, imperfect people. He took situations. Man, look at uh, the situations that we've seen in Genesis concerning Tamar. Was that God's will for, for, for Judah to do what he did? Of course not. But God can take the failures and faults of us, and there can be some good that can come out of it. It's not an endorsement of sin or wickedness. And, but we're, we're fractured. This world's fractured ever since the fall of man. We're all fallen creatures today, amen, since Adam and Eve. And uh, so, so God can do that. God can work. And it's amazing what God did, amen. And of course, we know the big picture that God, this was God, um, Basically, he made a promise, and he fulfilled that promise. You can trust in all of God's promises. Let me just stop here with verse 21 of Genesis 15. Now, therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them, and he spake kindly unto them. Wow. Talk about grace and mercy and long-suffering. Amen. He comforted them, 
Amen. He comforted them. He showed love. He showed compassion to them. He said, they didn't deserve it. He says, I'm going to leave it in God's hands. Vengeance is the Lord's, not mine. I'm going to let God bring the consequences. I'm going to let God take care of this. Amen. And he says, I will nourish and, uh, you and your little ones. He cared for them. And it's interesting. You know, it's easier to speak the words, but he did something. Amen. He put it into practice. He put it into practical action. Amen. He did provide for his brother his brothers and their families wow anyway what a what a amazing amazing ending of the book of genesis and genesis chapter 50 and i hope i hope hang in there you know it's an easy uh, bible reading plan only three or four chapters a day and uh, don't give up don't give up hang in there amen it, it's it's worth it it's worth it and uh today you should be starting the exodus amen wow here we are in the second book of the Bible. Well, listen, I trust your day will go well today. And uh, may God bless you and use you today. And until uh, we meet again, amen.